Hey gang, welcome back. Matt here. Well, I'm going to talk to you this time. Um, I guess it's time to update uh, my home rocket mass heater system here. Uh, let you know how it's been going and, and what's new. So, yeah, you've been asking for an update, and it's definitely time. So, I had a great winter with it uh, this last winter. Again, really happy with it. Totally satisfied. I did use about five cords of wood. Uh, you guys can't see it in this room. There are three uh, four foot by eight foot windows. Um, they're all 30 year old single pane aluminum frame with the seals dangling out of them if they're there at all. I do have some cheap 3M plastic over them. <laughs> but yeah, and no insulation in the ceiling, and this house is just terrible and windy. So the good news is I uh, got two new windows in already that I salvaged, and I just ordered a third one. So that situation is going to end. And hopefully I'll be able to cut down on wood use even more. But yeah, I ran five cords through it. Um, performed flawlessly. I didn't have any problems. I've been using a small piece of uh, ceramic, form ceramic fiber insulation as the cover. That's really handy. It doesn't uh, get hot or anything like that. I still do have my cleaning uh, bucket there, and I use that as a cover as well. Um, but yeah, so it's... I don't know what to tell you as far as uh, performance. I'm totally pleased. The barrel seems to be holding up fine. It doesn't ring. It's pretty dead. I think it's, you know, maybe starting to change or I don't know. But it's, it seems like it's doing fine. So a couple things to talk about. Cleaning it out. I haven't done it this summer yet, but I'm going to clean out all the horizontal flues. I do it every year. I'll put some pictures up here so you can see how that looks. Um, there are three cleanouts. There's one at the end of that bench there, there's one here, and then there's one hidden behind these rocks. And uh, that's a pretty easy process. I just put a vacuum outside, shop vac outside, and I run a long hose in, and that hose is long enough that I can snake in through any of these cleanouts and get all the way back behind that barrel. And uh, yeah, as long as you do that every year, no problem. Uh, do check the chimney. I haven't had any kind of creosote build up. There is some light, fluffy fly ash stuff that I might run the brush through and knock it out of there, um, but it certainly is in the risk of a chimney fire. Um, although these things do, they, you know, they send enough stuff through them, all the dust in the house that gets sucked in there and all the, the fly ash, they do build up stuff. So you got to make sure that you, um, if, you're, if you're thinking of building one of these, make sure you incorporate clean outs. Don't save that for later because you will want to get in there. Um, so there's that. Like I said, five cords of wood. I did a lot better this year in preparation, so my wood was dry, and boy, what a difference. You really, you know, I, you, you can't run these with uh, wet wood. It just won't work. And, uh, and I do feel like a lot of, when I read about folks who are new to the stoves, they have a new build, and they're, and they're just getting it going, and they're having problems, um, I always suspect uh, the wood first, the fuel. Um, wet cob as well, those are big culprits to making things hard to run. You just got to work through those first few um, days or burns and, and get things dried down and warmed up. But wet fuel will really just, like I said, just they just flat out won't work. Um, so if you're wondering uh, about your performance of your, of your stove, make sure you're using dry fuel to, uh, to test it out. So there's that. And um, what else should we talk about? Uh, the tag, I'm still using those, tech, I guess, to make some lighting. That's been a fun experiment. Um, yeah, well, geez, guys. Um, so I have, I do have a question for all of you, um, and hopefully it'll give me some feedback. I am incredibly satisfied with this stove. I wouldn't change it. I, I like the top feed. It does only take a little bit of fuel at any one time. Um, but it works really well for me and for the type of fuel I have here. Now, we've all been seeing these batch boxes, Peter's wonderful design um, and variations thereof. My Walker stove, if you haven't seen my Walker stove, uh, I'm going to point here and I'll make a little link to my Walker stove's um, video. Uh, it's an idea that I, I made, that I had, uh, that I brought to Washington, D.C. for the Alliance for Green Heat's wood stove decathlon. Um, it's basically a rocket stove, right, in a, in a self-contained box. I thought th that's a great way to, to introduce more people to the technology rather than uh, this big cob um, build that may 
be off-putting or, or unfamiliar for people. So I wanted to, to give folks um, something that fit our paradigm, right? A metal box stove that you just carry into your house. Um, so that was an idea. I, I, it's a neat stove. They work really well. Um, they're expensive to build, and, and of course the process to get certifications, EPA certification and UL listing, to sell in this country in our regulatory environment it's just more than I wanted to take on as a sole proprietor. Um, I have a lot going on, so that's not something I want to do. But anyways, so check out Walker Stoves. Uh, that'll give you an idea if you don't know what a batch box um, rocket stove looks like. That'll sort of give you an idea of what the combustion chamber looks like. So here's the question I have for all you guys. I'm satisfied. I love my J2. Uh, that's the stu this top fed style of rocket mass heater. Um, but you know, I have in my mind that I could easily convert this to a Peter Vandenberg uh, designed combustion core front end, a, uh, a Peter Vandenberg batch box burner there. I could convert the stove pretty easily to that style. It'd be a front load. Uh, my dimensions from here to here, it's just about right. So I could just basically drop it in place, keep all this the same. Um, and I could live with that this winter. And I could give you a living with the Rocket Mass Heater uh, version 2.0 <laughs> with that guy. Um, and we could see how it does. I'd be happy to uh, do that um, to see how it performs and, and what it's like living with it. Um, but unless someone pushes me towards that, I'm probably just going to leave this one alone um, because it's been working so well. But uh, I don't know. I'm curious. You know, it's, it's hard to tear this one up because <laughs> I like it. But I could build it again in, in a day, half a day. So, you know, let me know, you guys. If I get a, a few comments or a few votes saying, yeah, man, let's see what it looks like. Let's see how it goes. Then I, I'd happily convert. So there's that. Um, we'll see how wood use goes this year with the windows. I'm hoping to cut that way down. Uh, and, uh, and, yeah, I'm still, you know, folks, I still would choose this as a, uh, you know, wood fired heating source over just about anything out there. I was really impressed uh, with Woodstock Soapstone's entry at the Woodstock Decathlon, and I was equally as impressed with the Lo-Fi um, offering. I think it was the Cape Cod. They were awesome. I, you know, I've been so prejudiced against wood, uh, you know, normal box stoves since I took mine out, um, but boy, those guys changed my mind. They were fantastic. So, you know, they are expensive relative to something like this, and, and at the time when I built this, I, I really wouldn't have had the opportunity to put in a new stove, so it was really, really keep my old box stove or build something like this. Um, so, yeah, I guess two full winters, one and a half winter, uh, done with this stove now. Absolutely 100% uh, satisfied with the performance. I, there's no compromise in my mind. I wouldn't change it for the world. So there you go. If you have any questions or anything more I can detail for you, I'd be happy to share. Uh, I'm sort of struggling with uh, what people would want to know about the heater at this point. Um, and uh, yeah, so give me some feedback. Let me know what I can uh, tell you or, or just if this helped. All right, well, thanks for watching. There's the update, and uh, I'll see you next time.